You know, Stephen, one socialist wrote, quote, men are not biologically attuned to being committed fathers. Now, what is the problem here with this view from a biblical point of view? Well, uh, Brian, uh, it says that men are not biologically attuned. Well, the idea here, uh, actually, if you take this to its logical uh, conclusion, it is blaming God uh, for man's problems because God created man in a certain way. But the Bible uh, speaks of the fact that we are all sinners. It speaks of it in very graphic terms. Uh, for instance, it says, We have therefore before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are altogether gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. And the Bible says that uh, because there is sin in the human heart, uh, this sin is going to uh, work itself out in antisocial behavior. And uh, the Bible also speaks in the same book in Romans, uh, at the end of chapter 1, in a list, uh, a very horrible list of uh, very bad sins. It says, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And right here in the midst of this list, it says covenant breakers and without natural affection. And I would say, and I would submit to you, that uh, when a man refuses to, uh, to, to enter into a lifelong commitment with the woman that he professes to love, the woman that he wants to, uh, uh, to, to romance, and when he refuses to uh, take care of the children that are born to that relationship, he is a covenant breaker and he is without natural affection. And uh, men might think, well, that's no big deal. And as a matter of fact, some very famous uh, actresses have recently gone public with, with their own illegitimate children. Uh, one, uh, Madonna, not too long ago, uh, gave birth to a daughter, and uh, she's been quoted in the news media uh, giving all sorts of uh, advice as far as how she plans to raise her daughter and the things that she's going to let her watch and, and the things that she won't let her watch and all of those sorts of things. But, you know, uh, when a man refuses to take the responsibility for his offspring, the Bible says that he is a covenant breaker and without natural affection, and it's serious. Those that do such things are worthy of death. Uh, this is indeed a very serious matter before God, and so uh, we need to take these problems uh, very seriously. So it's not just a matter of not being biologically attuned to being committed fathers. It's much worse than that. Uh, we can't blame biology. God created man. Uh, when he was finished, he said it was very good. He was very happy with the creation that he, he had made. But the problem is that uh, men are giving in to sin, and uh, being a covenant breaker or being without natural affection is a very horrible sin and crime against the family and ultimately against the society and against the God uh, before whom we have to do the one we, that we are going to stand before uh, someday. Uh, give us a call this evening at one of the numbers that you're going to see on the screen uh, during the program, and uh, we would be happy to send you a copy of the book, Biblical Principles for Solving Problems in the Home. We've had a number of requests for this booklet recently. It's an excellent booklet. It's got a lot of very good practical and biblical advice that you need to put into practice in your own family, but you need to understand the Bible's principles before you can put them into practice. So give us a call this evening, and we'll be happy to send you your own copy of the book, Biblical Principles for Solving Problems in the Home. Dial right now. We'd be happy to answer your request. Brian, let's talk a little bit more about the Bible and, and in terms of what are the Father's responsibilities before God before the scriptures, and is it realistic to expect men to, to uh, accept these responsibilities? Well, the Bible uh, teaches that the father is the head of the household. He is to manage the household. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, the father has a responsibility to provide for his family financially. And uh, Paul says in Timothy that if a guy doesn't provide for his household, if a man doesn't provide for his household, he's worse than an infidel. He's worse than an unbeliever. Okay, so he has a financial responsibility. That means he has to be responsible and hardworking, a hardworking provider. <clears throat> but the, he's also the spiritual leader of the household. He's the, he's the leader spiritually, and that means he has to uh, set a godly example to his children. That means prayer, 
That means Bible reading, family devotions. That means he should obey the Lord's Day, the Christian Sabbath, in front of his children. He should make sure that the family's in a solid Bible-believing church and make sure that the, every day they're praying together and they're reading the Bible together and uh, hopefully going through some sort of a, a theological thing for children. Uh, we highly recommend the, the Shorter Catechism. It's called the Shorter Catechism, put out by the Westminster Assembly in the 1640s. Just an excellent little book, reciting doctrine to your children, helping them memorize doctrine. So he's a spiritual leader. He sets the attitude of the family. He sets the pace. He is the leader in that sense also. He wants to have a, it says he's to love his wife. Okay, he's to have a, be a, a kind, loving leader who sets the attitude of the family. And he really has a very, uh, very, very uh, important responsibility. And, you know, if he doesn't do his job, civilization is going to fall. Now, the, of course, the wife has a very, very important role also. Uh, the wife spends much more time with the children. And if you're into homeschooling, usually uh, the women do 80, 90 percent of the homeschooling. So they're bringing up the next generation. But if you don't have a good, solid husband uh, who's a Bible-believing Christian, who's leading, uh, you know, he's going to lead the family in the path of paganism and heathenism and idol idolatry and worshiping false god. You have to place Jesus Christ first and make the Bible the constitution of your home. Hmm. And you have to have, you know, that Bible has to be the foundation of every decision of, in the home. And it has to be, and that gives the wife great freedom, it gives the family great freedom because you don't have a dictator arbitrarily setting out his own rules, but he does everything according to the Bible and he's to love his wife and he's to love his children, he's to be as Jesus Christ. And a father who doesn't do that is really teaching his children a very false view of how God is supposed to be because in a sense, uh, they're to mirror God in a sense, okay, and to teach their children biblical responsibility. It's very, very important and it is a very realistic thing. It's commanded by God and it is totally realistic, and it's the only thing that's going to solve the problems in society. If the family is broken apart, you're going to have a bad society. You're going to have a bad civil government. You're going to have bad churches. If you have lousy families, families are what make up churches. And the pastor can do so much, but if the families are all falling apart and they're not obeying the Bible and they're not studying on their own, uh, hearing a sermon and everything, you know, you really need to have good, solid leaders in the home. And they're responsible, and they're very, very important. You know, what can the church do to encourage fathers and mothers to accept their responsibilities? Well, Brian, before I answer that question, let me just uh, quote a little bit from this uh, article that uh, has formed the basis of our program this evening. And it says this, men are not biologically attuned to being committed fathers. Left culturally unregulated, men's sexual behavior can be promiscuous, their paternity casual, their commitment to families weak. In recognition of this, cult cultures used to have sanctions to bind men to their children, and of course the institution of marriage has been culture's chief vehicle. Well, there's a lot of wisdom in that statement, but actually it reflects a, a humanistic viewpoint. Uh, it speaks uh, uh, about the fact that uh, culture needs to regulate man. And that's important, uh, and, and it certainly helps when, uh, when the whole culture frowns upon uh, sexual immorality and promiscuity and abandonment of uh, one's covenant obligations before, uh, before the, the, uh, the family and all of that. Uh, but then it speaks of the fact that marriage is uh, culture's chief vehicle. Well, actually, it's God's chief vehicle. As a matter of fact, if you read through the Bible, you'll note way back in the very first book of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, God provided for marriage. And God himself performed the first marriage. He uh, took uh, Adam, he, he gave him uh, a divinely administered anesthetic, and, and he put him into a very deep sleep. He, uh, he performed the very first surgical procedure and took a rib out of Adam, and from that rib made, in, uh, made it into a woman, brought her to the man, and uh, that bringing her to the man was uh, God's way of performing that first marriage. And, uh, Adam understood this intuitively, and he said, uh, uh, therefore she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of the man. She shall be bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Marriage is God's institution. Jesus Christ uh, hark hearkened all the way back to the cultural institution, or the cultural mandate in the Gospel of Matthew, when he said, uh, uh, it, from the beginning it was not so, but God himself has given us marriage. Well. Um, what can churches do to encourage fathers and mothers to accept their responsibilities? Well, the first thing I would submit is that they ought to take this matter seriously. 
the breakdown of the family is affecting the breakdown of churches. And so they ought to take this matter seriously. This is not uh, uh, just a, a passing fad. Uh, this is not culturally benign. This is culturally ma malignant. This is a terrible, uh, terrible uh, trend in our society. The second thing would be to teach the truth. Uh, Brian made reference a moment ago to 1 Timothy 5, verse 8. And let me read this. It says, But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And so uh, we need to hold our men to this standard. We need to teach it to our men, and then we need to hold them uh, to the standard. Uh, thirdly, we need to discipline offenders. Uh, churches must not just uh, look the other way and say, it's all right, we know that you've abandoned your family, but come on to the Lord's table. It's not for us to judge. Uh, come on and have communion with us. A person that has, uh, has abandoned his family, has denied the faith, he is not fit to come to the Lord's table. And so churches must act decisively in the case of covenant breakers who have unnatural affections, who have denied their own family and, and thus denied the faith, and they must be uh, kept from coming to the Lord's table. In other words, we need to send a positive message to men in this particular state telling them all is not right between you and the Lord. You cannot have a credible profession of faith in Jesus Christ if you are not supporting your family. If you've abandoned your family, if you've taken the path of least resistance and uh, you know, followed uh, uh, your, your next passing fancy, you know, a pretty uh, female walking by. You know, I just was reading uh, about Henry VIII and, uh, and all of his wives and, and uh, you know, how he, he uh, uh, wanted to have his marriage declared null and void because he had a new, uh, a new romantic interest, Anne Boleyn. And, and uh, no, that, that is uh, something that the church ought to discipline and uh, the church ought to fence the Lord's table. Brian, perhaps there are men that are listening tonight that are under conviction, realize that they have done this. What, what advice would you have for men that have abandoned their families? Well, if you're, if you're not a Christian, the first thing you need to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, believe that He died on the cross for your sins and that uh, His perfect righteousness is your righteousness, that it is imputed to you. You need to submit to Christ as Lord and repent of your wicked behavior. You know, you need to make sure you're a Christian. Then you need to make sure you go to your wife and you seek reconciliation. You ask for forgiveness, and um, you know you want to seek reconciliation, and you want to find a Bible-believing church, a church with godly men who can help you get involved in counseling and reconcile and put the family back together. Now, if you committed adultery or done other things, of course, that becomes very, very complicated. But you know you really want to seek reconciliation, and you're going to need godly advice and counseling, and I don't mean pop psychology, I don't mean that nonsense, but I mean good, solid, biblical counseling where the Bible is the foundation. You need to get back with your family, you need to reconcile, you need to assume responsibility financially and spiritually, and be the leader that God wants you to be, and repent, and get right involved. You know, Stephen, uh, what, what is really the only hope for the American family? Brian, I don't have much time, but I will say that the only hope is a return to the Lord Jesus Christ. It says in Matthew, behold, I'm sorry, in Malachi, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. Unless the Holy Spirit of God uh, turns this country around and turns the hearts of the fathers to the children, uh, there will be a curse, the curse of God upon our society. Thanks for listening. Tune in again next week.